Um, we haven't talked numbers in a while, I feel like, on this stream, so let's talk some numbers. According to Insider Gaming, nearly 90% of developers surveyed said they hate premium. Well, I don't want to say hate. Specifically, the article says, when surveyed, they said premium games don't need microtransactions, meaning $70 games, $60 games do not need microtransactions. Um, predecessor 1.0 release. Oh, I thought the game was already out. Well, I could be corrected. Um, which further reinforces what I've been preaching on this stream. I understand sometimes people get frustrated, but these developers are artists. And if I had to take a bet, I'd say most of them are good people. It's the suits. We got to learn the suits name so we can bring the complaints to the suits. Let's read the article. The microtransaction debate has been raging within the gaming industry for years now. And it's not just players who question the necessity of the extra purchases. In a recent survey among developers at DevCom 2024 in Cologne, nearly 90% uh, of those asked said that premium games don't need microtransactions. CEOs on Fraud Watch, you know it. Like the best analogy I can give is like these game developers are like artists that had like an underground buzz and they made the mistake of signing to a label without reading the contract. And now they're stuck having to make what the publisher wants because they want to maximize the dollars to appease the board. Um, fucking dog here, bro. Let me know. Um, according to the 100 developers asked out of the 300 speakers at the event, 89% said that they believe that premium AAA games can be financially successful just by being buy to play. Nigga, we know it can be successful. Gaming has been around. I um, gaming has been around since the late 60s is the first few games, and then like 70s. That's when like Pong came out. But like, I feel like true gaming started with the NES. I know that's not technically correct, but I feel like true gaming started with the original Nintendo, which came out, what, like 85 or something like that? It's been like 40, 50 years. That's the point. Um, <clears throat> we have enough data to suggest that if you just sell the game and it's good, your console will be fine. <laughs> so like, I don't even know why this is a thing. Uh, this microtransaction shit is a new thing. Um, sticking with business models, 65% of people believe in a premium games model for both physical and digital games. Only one person believed that free to play games with ads was the best direction for the industry. Let me ask y'all a question. Interesting. How would y'all feel if your free to play games had less microtransactions in exchange for having ads? How would y'all feel about that? Cause me personally, I'll take the ads. That doesn't bother. If done correctly. And this is where I would say, let me consult. If done correctly, the ads can't be like YouTube ads or television ads that interrupt the gameplay. It's gotta be, unfortunately, I hate to do this, but it's gotta be kind of like 2K. Like if you put like some billboards in the background of Fortnite promoting something, I'm okay with that. But it can't be ads interrupting. Yeah, it depends on the ad structure. Yes, no gameplay interruptions, but a picture or something is fine. I'll take that. I'll take billboards. In the, I mean, it's been a thing. You play racing games when you drive by. You're driving by billboards with ads in them. You're just not aware that they're ads. This has been a thing. It's just not more prevalent. Um, maybe some of these games need to implement dynamic ads where they can update the ads once a week or once a month so they can keep the cash flow coming in or whatever. Um, older games had ads all the time. Yeah, the difference is those were premium games that once you bought it, that was before the online, they couldn't update it. So whatever ad that was, that was there. I think because it's free to play, they wouldn't be able to just do one ad. They wouldn't want a constant influx of cash. So they would have to do dynamic ads where they're constantly swapping them out once a week, once a month, something like that. Yeah, that's a slippery slope. LO, I got to watch the ad to load your save. Yeah, if they do it like that, fuck that shit. But I, I, I'll take a billboard. I'll take a billboard. It depends on how it's done. Um, let's see. In other areas of the survey, 31% of the developers pr uh, prefer little AI usage in game development. Of course, creative people don't want to see that. That said, 21% did have interest in using AI to help with coding and general production to increase the development speed of the games. Makes sense. Finally, in regards to AI, the belief among those polled was that AI could replace human localizations and translations within the next 12 to 24 months. That's a good case use for AI. That's a good case use because like I've, I said it on a previous stream, there's a ton of really cool games that are in Japan that just never came to America. There's a ton of Dragon Ball, like Naruto games, even like crossover, like Jump Force type games that were actually good, uh, that never came to the States due to localization because it costs money to translate these games, to get new voice actors for the translations. This is one thing where AI could be good. We, we may not necessarily get like the voice actors, but you'll at least get the text translations uh, much easier if you can use AI. That's a good practice. I, I, I'm not mad at that. Um, 
but a bit of a moving on to the challenges facing the industry as a whole 55 percent believe it's caused by market saturation while other another 46 percent point towards the rising development of cost of games i think both are true i think the market is saturated with video games there's more than ever that's why you're seeing more games flop than ever i mean think about it when you were like i don't know if you're my age i'm old but when i was a kid i don't re- like there were games that flopped but like it seems like there's more games flopping than ever and that's because there's more competition than ever and that's why i was yeah, you got to get it right nowadays you have to get it right so i think that is part of the problem i mean y'all say i'm a dickhead but how many times have we pulled up trailers on the stream where there's another pixel art um roguelite game another pixel art metroidvania game another doom clone another fake deep game where you play as some little girl in a forest with a fucking fox i'm sick of them games and people be like oh you're an asshole like no because it's i don't care that it's indie all i care is that whether it's good or not if something is good and it's corporate produced and something is good and it's indie produced and they're the same quality of course i'm going to support the indie but god damn bro i'm tired of these fucking doom clones every five seconds i'm not an asshole that is market saturation and then people wonder why some of these games don't succeed it's because they're doing everything that everybody else is doing which in turn makes it harder for everybody else to succeed too many cooks we need some people to eat too many chiefs too many too many chiefs not enough indians okay um a bit of a fool yeah it's too many full sale graduation projects bro why can't you niggas go make games for mini clip? We need more mini clip games. What's your opinion on Amori? I don't know what that is. I don't have an opinion. Um, regarding layoffs, 57% said the layoffs will continue either at the same pace or at a higher pace over the next 12 months. These tech companies tend to overhire, unfortunately. On the opposite side of things, 43% said the layoffs would increase within the same time frame. I would imagine a lot of these companies probably overhired during COVID because everybody was printing money hand over fist, thinking that money was going to last forever. And now... It's crazy to say, but four years later, time really flies. Things are starting to even back out and, and plateau. Indie games definitely need to change it up. Last gen hyped them up too much. Hyped them up too much. I think what pisses me off about indie games, I say it with love. The beauty of creating it. So so the downside of being indie is you lack the proper corporate funding. But the beauty of indie is you get creative freedom. What's the point of being indie if you're just going to make a lesser version of something that already exists? Go make something that doesn't exist that's fucking creative. That'll make you stand out. That's my issue. That's what I'd be trying to say, and I feel like that part gets lost in trans. What's wrong with another Doom clone? I played Doom. (laughs) I played Doom. Jesus, bruh. You got creative freedom, and you choose to be like another nigga. That shit is weird. Um, Hollow Knight 3. People love Hollow Knight. DevCon is currently taking place in Cologne, Germany. I didn't even know there was a DevCon. So that's basically their version of um, the one we have over here in the States. All that freedom to make full sale games. Obviously, nobody has already made a game where you walk around aimlessly to narrative dialogue, right? (laughs) All right, buddy. (laughs) Uh, Where does Power World fall in that example? Power World falls in... I wouldn't say Power World was like super creative. Power World filled a void. Power World was what people want from Nintendo because people complain that pokemon games have lacked creativity and they did some things that nintendo fans wanted that's what that was that wasn't necessarily creative but it was more so solving a a problem in the market which is good that that's what you want and that's why it found its footing that's the key to success in anything you identify a hole in the wall you see water coming out and then you come up with a way to fill that hole so the water can no longer can flow and then also get patented and making sure nobody can copy it easily. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is you got too many people trying to fill a hole when there's no water coming through the wall. Bro, we don't need you to do that. We need somebody to work on the roof. We need somebody to realign the wheels or something. We don't need you to put gas in the car. Go do something else, nigga. God damn. Uh, innovation. Yeah. Find a way to fill the holes. Got. Yeah. And um, that part of the game takes research. You got to look at the market and say okay what is what is missing or how can i reinvent something so it's better than whatever you know what i'm saying like i said i'm working on a video right now that i haven't seen nobody do i'm gonna fill a hole in the market i'm feeling confident about this one you know <laughs> why is there no indie grand theft auto type of game the closest thing is probably game loft with their fucking bootleg ass mobile versions but those are those are very um what's the word i'm looking for very ambitious they cost a lot of money probably too much uh silent hill apparently some gameplay's been floating around GameSpot got a chance to check it out 
Excuse me. Um, I'm not too familiar with the series. I've never played it as a kid because I, I played more Nintendo than PlayStation. There's but no genre. We're keeping an eye on this one. At its best, it's so I'm not gonna much lie. This one's nine minutes. We're gonna speed it up. Or tired tropes and vile torture scenes. It's self-reflection. It's catharsis. It relies on your own fears, traumas, and What do you moves. think of the new Mafia announcement? I haven't seen it. We haven't gotten to the game. We're going to Gamescom after I finish this batch of articles. Or possibly alienate its audience. This is precisely what makes Silent Hill 2 such a memorable and pivotal entry in the horror game genre. Its sheer vulnerability creates a game where an even alienation feels like connection. I say all this to emphasize that the upcoming remake of this 23-year-old game is an incredibly exciting prospect to me. Though the original holds up well, there's no denying that it feels quite dated, and not always an endearing time capsule kind of way. There's also no denying that the game is incredibly influential. Its DNA is woven into countless horror games and horror adjacent titles, with last year's Alan sent and me an email decades too. later, this continues to be true. This ultimately elevates Silent Hill 2. All right, I'm going to read this email out for everybody because he wants some attention. Unban me. Unban reality of the internet versus the intent. Here we go. This is the last piece. This thing is hitting my email too. This is my business email. You're going to get blocked. <clears throat> Bro, you actually kind of weird. Any chance that you thought you were going to get unbanned? You're not because you're, you're, you started off insulting me. I know I mistyped. You typed in my chat that I taught you how to say racial slurs. You didn't mistype that. You thought it was funny. And it just wasn't true. Uh, but look, take all that abrupt actions you have. You really inspired me to do YouTube from GI podcast to story time. That's great. That's great. <sighs> Let's see. I know you deal with weird shit for a living, but you inspired me to do YouTube. Uh, I'm not Aiden. I'm not an Aiden Ross clone. <laughs> you seem to bully people like that's not cool. I'm now I'm a bully now. You're bugging. Yeah, all right, buddy. See you later, buddy. You're going to hell. I'm a bully. Yeah, look at the sad music for this nigga, bro. Like, you're bullying me. Hey, bro. I don't care what your intent was. The issue is that, like, this is, so this is a thing when I was a kid, and this is how I know that I'm getting old. The unfortunate thing, and this is the last thing I'm going to say about this, because I don't know if you're still in the chat. When I was a kid, we used to let the funny people be funny. Like, you had comedians at the highest level. And those comedians would appear in shows, sitcoms, movies. And then on the lower level, you had like your friend group, those people that you went to school with, and you let them be funny. Like everybody identified, that's the class clown. But like when the internet came out, niggas started retweeting things that, that are funny. I think it started with, y'all remember the, um, y'all remember the, the Drake, the Drake type of guy memes? Drake's the type of guy to do X, Y, and Z. When that stuff started happening, I remember I would see people copy and paste something that I already saw go viral. And then what would happen is, I could do like a whole documentary on this. People would get addicted to the likes that they got and they would start thinking that, yeah, Drake be like, they would start thinking that they're funny when in reality, you're just stealing jokes. The point I'm trying to make is shut the fuck up, bro. You're not funny. I don't care what your intent was. It wasn't funny. What part of that do you think is fucking funny? That's like the one nigga that came in my chat one time and he said some pedo shit about me. I said, nigga, don't ever fight. That's the type of shit if I saw you. And I'm not talking about this guy right here, but the pedo shit, I would have slapped you in real life. Exactly. There's there's lines for like everything. Don't come in here and say, yo, you taught me some racial slurs. Fuck your intent, nigga. It wasn't funny. Access at the moment. A remake then. But, 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 you said the Pokemon However, clip. It's like, nigga, you're not funny. Own perceived missteps. Now you're trying to say somebody bullying you. You need a father figure. Let it go. You've messaged me on Discord in the emails. <laughs> <laughs> like yo I, and i'm the type of person you know the crazy part is too i'm the type of person i could take a joke i sit up here and joke if i'm telling you it's not funny and i get paid to nigga i get paid to make people laugh i'm funny if i'm telling you it's not funny to come in here and say that just be like oh my fault og even if you would have donated and be like you know what my bad i just apologize i might have let that shit slide you said you slick getting harassed for real. Yeah, now you're harassing me, bro. Let it go. You are a fucking loser. Cash app, Discord, and the email. Get off my... Yo. Let me go find a condom because this nigga's on my dick, chat, bro. Let me... <laughs> Let me stop. I stopped using condoms a long time ago. I played as a proper indication of what's to come. The upcoming remake could be an exceptional and reverent experience. Detriment. <laughs> no sex before marriage, bro. And fresh faces who cite Silent Hill 2 as among their greatest inspiration. God damn, dude. Didn't feel entirely Wait till marriage. Wait till marriage. As a means to satisfy perceived modern demands. Nor does it feel swayed by the urge. Loki, I need to do stand up. My heart's not in that shit. That's why I don't do it. The same way it always has. With James Sunderland examining himself in a derelict bathroom mirror. Let's get back to this shit, bro. Somewhat chilling. Brings him to Silent Hill. James's new voice actor, Luke Roberts, nails the delivery of this and every one of his monologues I heard. 
managing to sound both what up, liquid? normal while also slightly awkward. Are there any Silent Hill fans in the chat? Because I'm not going to lie. Look in you in LA. You should try it. I'm going to pull up the one of what's the name shows, JD's shows. Um, what was I about to say? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Has anybody played Silent Hill? B -b 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 he sent me another email i blocked him my bad um 15 years ago so like what about it speaks to you this series freaking because like i'm not gonna lie i'm looking at the gameplay he looks like bootleg leon he's just kind of walking around like is the gun is it actually genuinely scary Associative. it's ridiculous impossible true that's what i keep telling myself as he makes his way down the winding fog-drenched footpath that leads to Silent Hill, he passes a familiar red symbol, one of those long-forgotten save points. And yes, they remain vital and are the only form of saving progress in the remake. James then offers the same strange meta remark he did in the original game. Looking at this makes me feel like someone's it's psychological. My skull. Though it seems this is one of those games like it has to come out at the right time for me to want to try it. Minor surreal situations. There was a hole here. It's gone now. Is another like, like if the new Mass because you know they got a they got another Mass Effect coming Bioware. Like if the new Mass Effect comes out the same day, I'm not playing this shit. It's mind and is still present. Feels like proof that the team understands how these quiet moments ultimately establish a more extreme level of dread than a high fidelity pyramid head jump scare might. In fact, just the sheer retention of the game's opening slow burn feels like a triumph. Silent Hill 2 earns and relies upon the way its opening minutes and the grotesque creatures found within them. Oh, what the fuck was that? And relies upon the way its opening. Is it? You're never gonna catch me. <laughs> the, 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 the greased up deaf guy. Crawl. Similarly, the team repeatedly noted that Silent Hill 2 is not a combat-oriented game. It is not fast-paced. It is not punchy. The same can be said for its remake, which improves upon <laughs> fluid and adding an extremely helpful dodge button and an aiming reticle, but it does not necessarily overhaul the overall experience. For some, this could be frustrating, as it still has that light dusting of PS2 jank that something like the Resident Evil remakes have more or less done away with. However, I found that the remake's combat actually feels perfectly in service the to the rest of the game. Part of what makes Silent Hill 2 as terrifying as it is are those small bursts of panic and tension that arise from its cumbersome combat. The remake seems to accept and build upon this. Take so it's purposely cumbersome. Away the more unruly and frustrating aspects. I don't know. Like, that's always been like an issue for me with like Resident Evil. That's it's hard. That's another reason. Why, I think that's the reason I like Dead Space more than Resident Evil. And like, I can't speak on this because I never played it. But like, Dead Space felt good when you played it as like a shooter, but it was still scary. Like, I get that it's purposely supposed to be clunky, but for me personally, it's just not for me. I feel like. While letting the game retain its sense of friction, combat feels it looks funny when it's sped up, but it's not at the forefront. Fortunately, the team being so forthcoming about that means that combat is treated truly as a secondary part and doesn't feel awkwardly pushed to the front and promoted, only for it to feel less polished than your average survival horror game in 2024. Another way they emphasize this within the game is by retaining the remaster's choice to separate the combat and puzzle difficulty settings, allowing you to fine tune your experience and select what level you wish to engage your brain or brawn. It's also worth this got puzzles in it. Impressive amount of accessibility options. Podcast is fire. I appreciate it. Whether a player has visual, auditory, or motor impairments, or merely likes being able to tweak a robust amount of player preferences, the they do. Oh my God, I don't know, man. This in Silent Hill. <laughs> this is just another way that Silent Hill 2 emphasizes constant, meaningful upgrades rather than embracing complete AAA modernity at any cost. Of course, I can't gloss over the most drastic of all these changes, the game's visuals. With the recent ongoing wave of remasters, remakes, and the like, the number one thing that I ask myself in playing these games is, does this feel like an attempt to make things sleek and modern, or did they successfully create the bridge between what was once there and how my imagination expanded it when I played it all those years ago? The Silent Hill 2 remake does the latter, and it does so exceedingly well. Oh, this shit is scary. They got you reaching in with your bare hands into a prison toilet? That is, ooh. This is a welcome surprise. He got Kookamongus all on his fist. Considering how rough some of the trailers published by Konami and Bloober look. The Silent Hill 2 remake is a gorgeous game that doesn't abandon the grime, grotesquerie, and yes, fog that made the original game so mesmerizing. In fact, it regularly amps it up. Locations are expanded upon with a handful of new buildings and eerie through, and plenty of objects and smaller details that make the world seem more grounded in reality, even if that reality is one of horrific isolation. Neely's bar, for example, no longer feels like merely a small, derelict cube, but looks like an actual abandoned bar. And as you stumble upon notes from off-kilter former residents, these locations transform into places with greater meaning. And yet, everything still feels the same. It still feels like Silent Hill. Suffocating. A place where the air feels... It looks interesting, though. Scent. And it's people. Hellish cerebral. I like the art direction. There's some level of uncertainty around the game's character models. Those I encountered, well, not on the same level as the game's environments. You know Silent Hill is based off a real place? Let me guess. Cleveland? <laughs> Looks surprisingly good. Though Angela's appearance in trailers seemed a bit off, to put it lightly, I found that her movements and VO were not particularly jarring in the game. And yet, what impressed me more than anything I've listed so far was the game's music and audio. Though the game's music has been reworked, it feels familiar with its iconic motifs wrapped in all new Remix. Music, static, synth, and intensity. And along with the new music is a focus on 3D depth-oriented sound direction. I get the gist of it. When when does this come out? Um, 
Let's see. Silent Hill 2 remake release date October. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Chat. Let's look at. Let's see. October uh, 2024 game releases. October was coming out around that time. Um, let's see. See Sword Art Online. I can't play it. Let me stop. <laughs> Dragon Ball is coming out. Dragon Ball comes out two days later. I'm not gonna lie. I'm playing Dragon Ball before that. Um, so yeah, this one, this one might get put on the back burner. Catch it on a sale or something. Super Mario Party Jamboree. Let's go. It's based in Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, what is that? What I've never heard of that town. Centralia, Pennsylvania. What is that like outside Philly or some shit? Black Ops comes out in October. Does it? Where is it at? Oh, it does. That comes out later, the 25th. Yeah, not gonna lie. Black Ops and Call of Duty. And I'm not gonna lie, we're probably gonna be on Call of Duty heavy. Not Call of Duty, but Dragon Ball. Oh, Call of Duty, yeah. But we're probably gonna be on Dragon Ball heavy. We gotta come up with our best builds. Best best Goku build. Uh Oh, wait, does Sean... Oh, yeah, Sean, Sean it comes out the same day as Call of Duty. How can I forget? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That shit on the back burner. I'm not gonna lie. How can I... I'm sorry, Sean, I betrayed you. Oh shit, just dance? Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> just dance. Oh man, 2025 20, edition. I think because nobody gives a fuck about these games outside of the community. Like a real conversation needs to be had. Like, how does Ubisoft get away with putting these games out? This shit is the dance version of fucking 2K, bro. I'd argue it's worse. Because at least with 2K and Madden, they 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 try to put new gameplay features in there. This shit ain't nothing but a damn playlist update. Just Dance 2025 Rap Caviar Edition. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Why did they highlight Sonic and not Call of Duty? Um, oh, yeah. September Jedi Survivor for PS4. I don't know. I think they was just linking it because you can you could pre-order or it's to their articles. Yeah, they have articles. That's all it is. Um, what else I got for you? Oh, Black Myth Wukong, which we are playing today, is breaking records. Not like us, Dance Edition. <laughs> Freaking uh, Black Myth Wukong reached over 22 million concurrent players on Steam for a single player game. What's it at now? Steam DB, Black Myth Wukong. It's the middle of the day, so it might be lower, but like it passed Power World. There's 200,000 playing right now. It peaked at 2.2 million uh that's crazy it passed power i think it's number two or number three in terms of steam it's four million sold and this is just the steam version this shit is going crazy which goes to show you single player games ain't dead only people who say that dumbass shit call of duty niggas and what i tell y'all call of duty niggas is not allowed to have opinions y'all don't play no games it's the least <laughs> it's the most single player game uh ever on steam most played single player game did you watch house of dragon nah that's not my cup of tea that's not my cup of tea so shout out to black myth wukong a little positivity we see in single player games going crazy keeping it in the realm of black myth wukong some <laughs> this was pretty interesting i don't know if y'all saw this apparently this document was getting passed around to content creators who got the game earlier and they put the do's and don'ts if you if you if you decide to receive a key Here's what you're not allowed to talk about when it comes to the game. Do not insult other influencers or players. I don't know why you would insult another influencer on a single player game. Yeah, my review is better than fucking UTX JG the Dawn. Fuck him. So watch my shit. Do not use any offensive language or humor. This is why I don't be getting free shit half the time. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. Do not include politics, violence, nudity, feminist propaganda, fetishization and other content that instigate negative discourse <gasps> being a, a feminist is negative saying women should get paid is negative according to this document this is really weird do not include words like covid and quarantine and do not discuss china's policies <laughs> This shit is so weird, bro. It's a game about the fucking mythological monkey king Wukong, aka my nigga Goku. What up, bro? This shit is so weird because, like, yo, I'm gonna make a video about this game, and I'm not gonna lie. 
Not once did I think in my impressions, my review, am I going to talk about feminist propaganda? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? That shit, that's the type of shit where you just telling on yourself. You telling on yourself. Don't talk about China's policies. So the CCP is back in your game. I, be, I better not have to give no info up to play this shit, bro. Yeah, CCP out the ass. This shit is goofy. This is the type of stuff that gives you negative press for no fucking reason. Dry snitching. Woke game. Shout out to all my Wokies. I thought it was funny. I don't give a fuck. You can't censor me. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, you said, uh, you do? Wait, what? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. You were never suicidal? I was never suicidal. Yeah, you're right. I don't give a fuck what the CCP think, bro. Because I'm proud to be an American. Well, at least I know I'm free. Let me stop. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Uh, I think this might have been announced. This came out a, a couple days ago. It was an article about the Indiana Jones game coming to PlayStation. Has this been confirmed? This might have been confirmed. I saw something on the timeline. Um, I don't know. Indiana Jones. It has? Yeah, let me update it. Da -da 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 -da. PlayStation. I wasn't sure if it was real or not. Da -da 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 -da. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle finally gets a release date for Xbox and PlayStation. It is December 9th, 2023. That's actually a good release date for this game because like, I don't know. I can't, I don't know what the temperature on this game. So I think it is good to release it in December. Uh, oh, wait, I'm bugging. That was when it was announced. I'm bugging spring 2025. I can't read my fault. Spring. Yeah. I think they should release it in December. I don't know what's the temperature on this. Uh, are y'all excited about this game? I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of like, eh, depends on, depends on what's coming out out around the time. Cause like this shit, uh, the, the combat looked a little stiff, looked a little stiff, but it is going to be on game pass. So it'll be free. So it depends on when it comes out. I think you said yes. I don't care what you think, Brooke. Uh, December is Xbox PlayStation is 2025. Okay. So it is coming out in December. Wait, what? Which is coming to PC and uh, which is just like, uh, ah, okay. Eh, I, this is a wait to see when a review comes out. I'm gonna wait to see a review. I'm not too super excited about it. And then last but not least, keeping it on the topic of woke Disney's Star Wars, the Acolyte has been canceled for a season two. Some people speculate the reason it got canceled is because the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. <sighs> This nigga Siggy right there. The power, <laughs> the power of many. <laughs> That's funny that he's right there. Oh shit! Right there, fucking trolling. It's unfortunate this shit got this shit got canceled because I didn't watch it, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't watch it because I seen several clips and it just looked bad. But like you know, people in the internet are gonna run with it and they're gonna say it's bad because it's woke, black leads. Da da da. It just look like bad writing. Like that, that I'm not gonna lie. When I saw that power mini shit, it did turn me off. It wasn't that bad. I heard that the um the choreography is pretty decent. Uh, you said it was awful. I I haven't heard I haven't heard anybody say overwhelmingly like yeah this is worth watching. And it sucks because Disney is fucking up the Star Wars timeline for this shit, bro. Ever since Disney took over Star Wars, the only thing that I feel like they've made that was legitimately fire, because them last three movies was not it. Um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the Jedi Survivor series is fire, and then probably Endor. Mando, mm. Mando season one and two was cool, but that season three, <laughs> I don't know, man. We got to see what they do with season four. Ahsoka was cool. Ahsoka was cool, but like I didn't love it. The best part about Ahsoka was uh, Balin Skull. The best part about Ahsoka wasn't Ahsoka. But like the only thing I feel like they've done where I, like most people universally agree is definitively fire is probably indoor and then the Jedi Survivor series. Oh, I, I forgot about the Kenobi show. That shit was mid. That shit was mid. Like Disney might need to give up Star Wars. Like they're just fucking up the timeline, bro. Rogue One was fire. No, it wasn't, nigga. Stop. Rogue One was okay. Let's be real. The best part of Rogue One was the last 30 seconds of the movie. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. That's what y'all like. When Vader showed up and that shit was fire. I'm not gonna lie. That shit was fire. 
Rogue One, when, when Darth Vader showed up at the end, it was probably the best Darth Vader scene we've seen in cinema. But the movie as a whole, it was I. It was like a 7 out of 10. It was cool, but you know. Fire, I don't know. Nah, that's an L take. Well, fuck y'all too. Like, <laughs> yeah, let me stop. Let's, oh my God, Star Wars Outlaws is coming out. The point I'm trying, I, I think... I think we can still all agree overall since Disney's purchase of Star Wars, they've muddied the timeline and it's been very inconsistent. There's nothing. The fact that we're even debating this, there hasn't been much that's like, yo, that's definitively fire. Disney, Disney needs to get it together, bro. They need to get it together. Yeah, they should give it to someone else. They are fucking shit up. I'm personally tired of them exploiting the original trilogy just as much as i love cal kestis he really fucks up the timeline and how they're going to implement him into the storyline and they keep implementing all these different characters they need to get it together for the next trilogy so they can find a way to milk that instead of the old shit um nah you're right on disney they ruined the franchise but rogue one was peak maybe i need to watch it again i just remember thinking it was i right. maybe i need to watch it again i don't know i gotta get somebody into star wars shout out to the 900 people the next trilogy they already confirmed they're working on another trilogy and the rumor is that 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 ray might come back and if she does i'm not watching that shit I'll, I'll allegedly watch it but i ain't watching it i ain't paying for it nothing nothing was muddied with acolyte people were going off something that wasn't even canon true 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 kyle kessis is fire no he's a fire character i like him but it still fucks up the timeline like you you do have to take that into consideration